four point game. DeJulius puts up a three. Yeah. Bearcat Blitz coming at y'all after a, another win in National Invitation Tournament from Cincinnati. What's going on, everybody? I'm your host, Russ Heltman, joined by my co-host, Neil Meyer. Big thanks to Neil for taking the reins and guiding the ship last week on Bally Sports. Great show with Terry Nelson, the color commentator of the Bearcats, following their run through the NIT. Back in a familiar spot, the same spot they were in last season as... They fell in the quarterfinals to Utah Valley, if I'm not mistaken, on the road, and a chance to avenge that quarterfinal loss against a different opponent this time around, but another road date in this tournament against Indiana State. We'll dive into all that. Coming off of a big victory against Bradley, 74-57, to in a game where they unfortunately were missing. Day-Day Thomas, as of breaking news, right before the game, went down with a broken bone and was missing for this contest because of that injury in the San Francisco victory. Didn't matter. It was the Jizzle James coming out party. We'll touch on that and a 74-57 win to start the show. Get into kind of the impact of that game for Jizzle James on the overall program as a whole and take a closer look at that Day-Day Thomas injury. And then we'll preview the uh, Indiana State matchup. A close, close affair expected. I think it's going to be a tight one on the road against a team that is 15 and one at home this season and has won mm -hmm. their first two conference or first two NIT games, excuse me, by nine plus points respectively. Neil, welcome in my man. Thank you for, uh, for taking the reins last week as, uh, as I got a little R and R away from the show and the beat. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a great show with Terry Nelson and glad you got some well-earned time out there in the Bahamas and on your cruise. Yes, sir was well earned but overall we're back to business and business as usual with another quick game here on tuesday night versus a very tough indiana state team as you mentioned 15 and one at home coming off two big wins in the nit following their victory over minnesota on sunday they had a dominant showing versus smu in the opening round of the nit but ross if you ask me this is a indiana state team who got robbed of an ncaa tournament bid but they are coming with full of vengeance to show the committee why they belonged in the NCAA tournament. And they're proving it right here in, the NC in their NIT run. But man, this is a, a dominant Indiana State team looking back at all the measurables for the Sycamores. It, it's going to be a battle on Tuesday night, to say the least. Yeah, we'll get into that in just a moment. All the tournaments happening right now as the tournament is here, the big NCAA tournament that is, and Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for this season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up-to-the-minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. You can track your bracket in real time all the way through the tournament. Head to Bet Online today and get on, in on all the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on that first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. And what a game it was for Jizzle James against the Bradley Braves. The good old Braves went down hard on Saturday, 74 57 behind 25 career high points from Jizzle James. He goes 11 of 17, highly efficient from the field, was cooking with that mid range jump shot. Uh, got a great question from Scott Springer to Jizzle about that after the game. Three rebounds, one assist, and really the Jizzle coming out party, Neil, and an unfortunate kind of scenario to have it happen where he plays his most minutes in any game so far in his career 38 minutes as out of jizzle james in aid of day day thomas going through a broken foot his season is done unfortunately he was seen obviously on crutches uh on the sidelines of the game and won't be available for the bearcats over the final three potential games of the season here five is it four four games left or three i think it's just three games left. Three. yeah there's three there's three obviously because we're in the quarterfinals of the nit so what a what a performance neil out of Jizzle, it was something that I, I kind of expected Jizzle to play well, but I didn't expect him to come and, and impact the game offensively with that kind of efficiency. And it just shows you 
kind of what this team can look like on the defensive and offensive end when Jizzle's playing that well defensively. It's catalyzing some steals. It's catalyzing some fast break momentum on the other end, creating easier offense for the Bearcats that way. And then once he's able to get into his bag of mid-range tricks and get those to actually play out the way he wants them to, it's it's a scary sight that this team can be at all three levels on either end of the floor when they get point guard play like they got out of just James on Saturday afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the biggest thing, Russ, that we haven't touched on in the 38 minutes of play, one turnover, just yeah. one turnover. And that is, you're looking down in the stat line, everyone's going to see the 25 points on 11 for 17 shooting. But then you're looking down, a true freshman playing 38 minutes with only one turnover, that's, it's pretty dang impressive, to say the least. And, Russ, we talked about the mid-range jumper. Scott Springer asked a great question in the post-game press conference. When Jizzle gets to that mid-range spot, good luck defending it. Just really good luck defending it. And he even said it himself. He was like, I, I perfected that shot in high school because it's a more it's a higher efficient shot than him hunting the three ball. And that shows right there the IQ of the talented freshman, but man, Russ, it was an electric showing from Jizzle James on Saturday, especially in the role of Day-Day Thomas going down. It's not easy to step in for 38 minutes. I thought maybe you would see a guy like CJ Anthony potentially get some minutes increased or see Simas Lukosius kind of take the reins at the ball, ball carrier a little bit up there, bring the point guard role, but overall it was the Jizzle James show all the way around 38 minutes. 25 points could have been 27, but got a little antsy on the layup on the run out attempt, but overall in a, a dominant showing from Jizzle James. And if they can get that kind of performance, I think a lot of people were anticipating what would happen with Jizzle James and the role with day day going down, but 25 points for us. We've talked about it all season that he could be that impact player for this Bearcats team deep in the season, but this is just a credit to his work ethic. 38 minutes as a freshman is incredible. But, Russ, we've heard it all season about how Wes Miller has had to keep this guy out of the gym and restrict his access to the gym because he lives in Fifth Third Arena, in the practice arenas, just getting up shots, perfecting his craft. So, overall, it was a great sight to see on Saturday, especially for a guy like Chisel James. Wow. I was so impressed, man. Just so impressed. It was just a, a perfect kind of – prism view of what the next three i mean hopefully honestly for bearcats fans even less years of action from jizzle james is going to be because if he plays like this over the next two years even over the next year he's going to be getting looks at the nba and going to be potentially that next entry into the professional highest level ranks from this bearcats program that really hasn't had any in the past decade lance stevenson is basically it for cincinnati in terms of guys that have spent full seasons in the NBA. Jacob Evans had a cup of coffee, kind of a little taste here and there as a rookie. But other than that, Lance doing the guitars has been really the only Bearcat that has cracked the NBA. And you can see whether it's him, whether it's Dan Skillings potentially developing over the next six months to 18 months and growing his NBA potential. The talent is just getting more and more concentrated on this roster. It's getting more and more easy to see and we saw that on full display, and it was a full trusting of Wes Miller. I thought that was really, really interesting, Neil, how he didn't really expand his rotation at all in this game once they lost A.D. Thomas. Josh Reed got a few more minutes, like six to seven more minutes than he's used to, played 21 in this game, usually hovering about 10 to 13 when he gets in the games this season. But Jamil Reynolds didn't really garner more run in this game. It was mostly just dealing with the guys that have brought him here, dancing with the devils that have done it, and going with more just increased ball handling, increased ball pressure, and increased responsibility on Jizzle James, who, Neil, if he plays defense like he did in the last, eh, let's say, 30 minutes of the game, 25, 30 minutes of the game, was a little lost in the beginning portions of getting caught in rotations and was going under and making some under screen decisions on jump shooters that you maybe want to see get cleaned up here or there. But I don't think you have to worry about playing him and Day Day Thomas together next season if Day if Jizzle James is going to play defense like he did in this contest. You make him the main ball handler. You put Day Day Thomas into that John Newman role that I know we know Day Day Thomas can thrive in as one of the best steel artists in the country, let alone 
one of the better defenders on the team this season. So I, I think that was a great kind of encapsulation of what this backcourt could potentially be in 2024 and 2025. Yeah, absolutely. And if you can continue to get performances like that out of Jizzle James, I don't think many people have to worry about playing him alongside Day Day Thomas. I mean, we saw right. it how it's played out this season at times. I thought it's been a fantastic pairing all season when they were on the court together. But overall, if you can get a 20 plus performance night out of Jizzle James anytime throughout the span of the rest of the season or next season, it's going to be hard to keep him off the court. And Day-Day Thomas's defense has only gotten better as the season has gone uh, gone on. I mean, we saw it in the Big 12 tournament. We saw it down the latter half of Big 12 conference play. Day-Day Thomas has a tremendous role for this team, and Jizzle James does as well. But I think for the best interest, with John Newman leaving, it might be worth the option to give them a look at playing them both alongside together because it could be a very exciting tandem. You have – obviously, we've seen Day-Day Thomas – uh, shoot lights out of the ball. We saw it in the Big 12 tournament. And if you it's, it's it, spurts, it's spurts. Day Day's got a lot to work on with that jumper, consistent wise. But in spurts, we've seen it for sure. We've seen it in spurts, yes. Yeah. So, but if you can get a solid, solid defensive matchup out of a 10 to 14 point night, night in and night out, in that John Newman role from a guy like Day Day Thomas, it, it's going to be exciting to watch next year with Jizzle James, Day Day Thomas. But Russ, we also have to talk about. Look down at the stat sheet from Bradley. Your 74 points roughly, or 62 of your 74 points roughly came from Dan Skillings, Jizzle James, CMOS, Lukosius. It's and that's your say, that's your offensive light. I mean, that's your those are the aortas of your offensive heart next year, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's who is going to, to be say, the trio you're looking at probably the headed monster for right, next. That's going to be your three leading scores the next season, you would think, unless I mean. Who knows what they got cooking in the portal. I think this team is maybe one legit scorching shooter away from being a true Big 12 contender next season. Maybe they get that guy and he works into that threesome of top scorers. But yeah, Neil, like set it up, man. That like, that is that was from what we saw Saturday, it just has to give fans so much hope and so much belief, just given what we saw Saturday and the trends of those three players throughout the past couple months. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the growth from Dan Skillings, from where he was at the beginning of the year to now. And then Simas Lukosius, I mean, I don't know what else. Three Moss, say baby. He's earning that nickname. Whoever – somebody had to – somebody coined Three Moss, and I got to give him credit, but I don't know who it is just yet. We got to get him to come forward. It's the nickname. It's Three Moss. It's got to be I don't know what else you can say about Simas Lukosius at this point. I mean, just another fantastic performance. 17 points. Six for 16 shooting, five of 13 from behind the arc. But three Moss, the nickname, Russ, whoever gave that nickname, it's sticking. Because looking down, I believe he, if I remember right, he was 10 of 12 to start the NIT from behind the arc before going cold on Saturday. 10 to 12, that's shooting what, Russ? 83% roughly? It's in the 80s. I'm no I'm no quick math whiz on that that's that slice. But <laughs> that's still, still pretty impressive to look at. Crazy, crazy stuff, man. Great, great signs for the future. Great signs for the rest of this tournament. Great signs for building momentum and really capping off this season as one of the final teams playing basketball in March. That's what you can carry into the offseason in terms of momentum of likely in a rare sense. I'm going to knock on wood, but keeping a lot of this roster together, hopefully, if you're a Bearcats fan, there's not many guys you really want to see leave. And this coming offseason, you add one or two pieces as a bastion of, hey, we just went to the NIT semifinal. We just went to the NIT final. We just won the NIT. We are one player like you away from not only competing and winning and possibly contending in the best conference in America, but by doing that, showing that we deserve to be a highly seeded team in the NCAA tournament and start to make their hay and make their voices heard as the 2020s Cincinnati Bearcats first team in the 2020s to punch that ticket to the NCAA tournament. Very, very impressive win over Bradley, 74 to 57. The defensive marks were there. They did a great job pestering the Bradley smaller defenders, forcing seven steals, 26 points in the paint for UC, 40 total rebounds. I mean, they were all over the glass and they did a great job turning those turnovers into points, 16 points off turnovers to just nine for Bradley in that contest. 
Going to have to do a lot of that against Kareem, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with a CR. No K-R-E-A-E-M. No K-R, K-R-E-A-E-M. It's a different type of cream going on with the Indiana State Sycamores. We'll have that preview coming up in just a moment. But I want to kind of pick Neil's brain about that potential backcourt next season and see if the one maybe potential major issue is going to be the hangup that makes them not make that decision in terms of Wes Miller and his staff rolling with Day-Day Thomas and Jizzle James as the starters in 2024-25. All that coming up on Bearcat Blitz. Neil Meyer, Russ Elvin with you all on Bearcat Blitz. Check us out on Bally Sports Ohio every single weekend on YouTube. Talking Cats, the visual portion of the show. Talking Cats with Russ Heltman. And on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcasts. Please subscribe, rate, and review there. Neil, so we just discussed, we we did a lot of the Dizzle James impact discussion that I wanted to talk about. And, and obviously, unfortunately, no more impact of Day-Day Thomas, who has had a very solid opening season at the Division One level for the Cincinnati Bearcats, his time coming to an end this season, at least, with a broken foot, unfortunately. He will not play in the remainder of the games. Finishes with a 10.4 average, 10.4 points per game, 2.4 rebounds, 3.3 assists, and also a steal mark that is just so impressive. 1.7 steals per game. I'm pretty sure, uh, I'll confirm this once I get Neil's rebuttal here, but I'm pretty sure he has posted a top five total steals mark on any season in the history of the program. So the impact is there from day day. He has more than earned his spot. He has more than earned his, his I think, Bearcat claw marks, so to speak, and to be able to go on and 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 continue being a starter on this team next season. Now, the question, Neil, is will they go small and go with that backcourt next season, or will they go out and look for a bigger wing defender or slide Dan Skillings into that two-guard role? There's a there's a there's just a size aspect component that is a hang-up with potentially starting Day-Day Thomas and Jizzle James together, Neil, because you get a backcourt that maxes out at six foot one for Jizzle James and six feet tall for Day-Day Thomas. Is the potential speed, offensive impact, and known defensive impact that Day Day Thomas has already shown at his size at six foot one? Do you think that's enough? All of those combinations to overcome that size night to night in the Big Twelve against these big physical backcourts, or do you think they will ultimately try to tweak things around and maybe make Jizzle a super sub sixth man like Dan Skillings was off the bench, still getting a high allotment of minutes? but not necessarily working into the starting lineup, or maybe they do the same with Day-Day Thomas and they, they they pick it that way. Will they ultimately go with those two guys as the starting backcourt? I think the biggest hangup is the size, and it's a, a significantly notable hangup at that because John Newman has been that six foot five stopper enforcer for the past two or for all of this season and was expected to be that last season. Yeah, that's a great question, Russ. Obviously, looking into this season. Day-Day Thomas and Jizzle James had a lot on their plate because they were the only two point guards on the roster. And yeah. overall, I think I think it could be an option that they roll with those two again next season. And then you slide Dan Skillings into maybe that three role to be that elite defender. I mean, if Dan Skillings can have an, an elite defensive performance like he put together on Connor Hickman on Saturday right. and take over for that John Newman role, it, it could be very, very significant for this Bearcats team. It might be a situation where the development of Dan on defense unlocks the ability to get those two guys and then unlocks your ability to get the best offensive combination from your starting five on the floor. Because, I mean, I mean, Aziz, year two in this program, CMOS, year two in this program, along with Dan at the three and those two guards at the one-two spot. That's a pretty good looking starting five, Neil. And that's before you even get into the transfer portal. That's with no new transfers added it. Yeah, exactly. And you never know with the transfer portal. Everybody obviously right. knows what the transfer portal is. And man, Russ, there's a lot of different things that could happen. You never know. But Day Day Thomas and Jizzle James, I think you will see them play a lot more together next year than what we saw this year. But Russ, or Wes Miller even mentioned throughout this season that they're still rookies. Obviously, Day Day's coming from Juco. Jizzle James, true freshman. Now, in the latter half of the season, 
you're seeing what those two are capable of this high level in Division One basketball. I mean, the best conference in America, and they're going in there night in and night out competing. Jizzle James just had the best performance of his career. Day Day Thomas had the best performance of his career on the big stage at the Big 12 Championships. So, I mean, you never know what could happen. But I think there's different opportunities and options that West Miller and the Bearcats could go. Because, if, you, like we talk about, you slide Dan Skillings to the three. He not only provides great size at six foot seven, he has a long wingspan. He's athletic as can be. I mean, he affects the game on so many different what on so many different levels. So that right there could unlock the offensive game for Day Day Thomas, Jizzle James. But then overall, it could allow Seamus Lukosius to play off the ball a little bit more, get to create his shots like we've seen as of late. Could really open up the front court. And I mean, Russ, we've talked about Aziz Bandego as well, but. Neil Reynolds in year two could be fantastic as well. Obviously working in the right. monster factory, right. whatever this off season has, it's a, it could be a scary combo next season. And I think a lot of people are starting to realize that, but now you're getting these guys in the weight room from year one to year two, Aziz Bandega, Jamil Reynolds don't have to worry about the waiver situation. They can just go in there, focus on the next season, ready to go. And next thing you know, it's like that changes your whole mindset. Cause obviously they had to deal with that stuff for, what was it, Russ? Five, six months of whether to, whether or not they were going to know if they were going to be cleared. Too long. So you eliminate all that process. You get a good mindset going into the offseason. And, man, Russ, it, it's exciting to see what they could do. But overall, I see them playing a lot of significant minutes together next season in the 2024 to 2025 season as well. It will be shocking to see them not share the floor a lot more than they did this season. And I don't have to do anything else than what Neil did right there. There is a lot to be excited about, people. A lot of combinations to hopefully see fruit bearing from over the next seven to eight months. And another combination, more combinations that are going to involve, I would imagine, at least one significant transfer that could be the skeleton key ultimately unlocking all of this in terms of a shooter from range just need one more go-to shooter a cj frederick unfortunately injuries kept him from being that this season they were just that one player away all throughout the campaign so so close to an ncaa tournament berth but closer now to the semifinals of the nit we'll preview the quarterfinal matchup give a player to watch and a prediction coming up after this on bear caplets Bearcat Blitz wrapping up here with a look at Cincinnati versus Indiana State. The Sycamores 15-1 and at home this season. Cincinnati trying to hand them their second home loss of the campaign. 9 p.m. tip on Tuesday with Indiana State sitting as a roughly, depending on which sports book you're looking at, three and a half point to two and a half point favorite. Total sitting in the 155 range, so points expected in this contest. I do expect there to be points, and I expect that over to go uh, on the O side instead of the underside this time around. 56.9% ESPN matchup predictor favorite is Indiana State, so I think they're a justifiable favorite here, Neil, just like Utah Valley was a justifiable favorite last year. And I think you see on their ends, they got Aziz Bandago this time. They don't have to go up against Aziz Bandago. And to me, that's going to be the ultimate X factor in limiting my biggest player to watch. He's going to lead any player to watch segment on the Indiana State side, Robbie Avila, one of the most efficient players in the entire country, shooting almost 65% true shooting mark over a 25 PER this season. He is an unbelievably special talent looks like uh looks like Nikola Jokic at your local Y essentially plays like it too could distribute well is just highly efficient shoots over 30 36 percent from the from the three-point line uh over 55 percent from the floor he is very very difficult to deal with Neil Neil and a guy that Aziz Mandego is going to have to shut down they have to figure out a way excuse me 53.3 percent from the floor overall and from two point range, he's shooting 65 or excuse me, 61.7%, a part of a two point shooting team, Neil in Indiana state that leads the country from two point range and is top 12 nationally in percentage from three. They have five guys averaging 10 plus points. Robbie Avila being the head of that snake. Ziz Bandego got to find a way to 
disrupt him inside, maybe bring the physicality to Avila a little bit down low, get him in foul trouble. This is this team has half of their losses this season when the uh, big man has four plus fouls and they lost the only game he fouled out of. So getting Avila in the foul trouble is going to be massive and finding a way to chip away at his 17 points per game average, 6.6 rebounds and four assists. The dude does it all at six foot 10 and 240 pounds out of Oak Forest, Illinois. Got to slow down Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to get the win here, which I think Cincinnati will do just enough of. 80 to 79 high scoring classic in Terre Haute, Indiana. UC gets the job done and moves on to the NIT semifinals. What do you got, Neil? Yeah, obviously you touched on Robbie Avila. Everybody knows what kind of caliber player Robbie Avila is, and what he has done this season has been fantastic. But I'm going to go with Ryan Conwell. And the reason I say that, Russ, is because this is a matchup where John Newman could absolutely feast on the defensive end. And Ryan Conwell has not seen anybody like John Newman at all this season. So it's going to be an interesting matchup there. Obviously, Conwell comes into this one averaging close to 16 points a game, a little over 16 points per game, 16.6. Overall, he's shooting 42% from the three, which is second on the team. A true scorer. Leads the second on the team in three-point attempts behind Isaiah Swoop. But overall, Russ, I don't think Ryan Conwell has scored in single digits besides three games this season. If I remember looking at the stats, right, it's either three or four games. But this is an, a game where John Newman's defensive efforts, whoo, get ready. That's the matchup to watch right there. John Newman, if he can take away Ryan Conwell, it, it's going to be an electrifying matchup. And I think Newman's physicality could be the difference maker in this one, Russ. I mean, we saw him struggle in the opening round of the NIT versus San Francisco where he went 0 for 10. He bounced back with a dominant performance versus Bradley on the defensive end where he finished with 10 rebounds, six points, 10 rebounds, and four assists. So he was doing it all. But I think that that's the matchup to watch right there. Obviously, Aziz Bandego versus Avila in the paint is something that could throw a lot of people off. but. I think the front court for Cincinnati containing Robbie Avila, whether that's Jamil Reynolds, Victor Lockin, Odio Guama, Aziz Bandego, whoever that may be. I mean, you're looking down at the depth. Cincinnati has so much depth there in the front court that they could they could really play however they want to cause a lot of havoc on Avila. Do they though, Neil? I mean, we didn't see much of Victor Lockin on this past weekend. Who knows how much we're going to see on Tuesday. And outside of Aziz... You can't really count on 15 plus minutes of Jamil Reynolds this season. We haven't hit, get, seen him give a good game where he's played 15 plus minutes. So, uh, like Aziz is going to have to stay out of both bigs on either side. Avila and Aziz are going to have to be trouble. out of about foul trouble. And obviously, Odio Guama can come in and give you some help there, but he's he's down the line a little bit in terms of the rotation and and a guy that they have not wanted to rely on over the past really since the calendar turned to 2024. So, what do you got, Neil? What's your prediction? Prediction, you're going 80-79. It's going to be a high-scoring game in Terre Haute on Tuesday night. I'm going 82-76 to in favor of the Bearcats. All right. He likes Cincinnati. We both like Cincinnati. Get it done. We'll see how that fares for the red and black. For Neil Meyer, I am Russ Heltman. Hoping you all enjoy the game on Tuesday night. We'll be back to recap it on the late part of the week show right here on Bearcat Blitz presented by Bet Online. This is the second. 15 seconds left. Shot clock off. Four point game. DeJulius puts up a three. Yes!